In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid catching a falling knife in your trades. If you've ever been burned by trying to buy the dips or the mean reversion trading, just to see your trade rip it rip the other way, stick around because we're gonna dive deep in how the pros manage risk and profit from these situations. What's up everybody, Chris Dover here, founder of Pollinate Trading. If you're into real data-backed trading edges and not just fluff, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. Today, we're talking about mean reversion and why catching a falling knife can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm going to show you how I avoid catching a falling knife. Doesn't happen every time. By the way, you can go in, buy, and it just takes you out. You got to know when to get out. I'm not saying this is going to be a 100% thing or anything. That's ludicrous. Luda! Um, but you'll find that these principles work particularly well in day trading as well as swing trading. Okay, it's not just a magic, oh, in the daytime, I buy it. Crypto's falling right now. Everybody's yelling about buy the dip on Twitter at the moment. And you know what? If you, all you did, just follow these principles, you could keep yourself from getting a dip that becomes a dippity dip, the dippity dip, 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 dip to the dip. Uh, and you become a long-term investor. All we're looking to do here is set this thing up so that we have the best advantage possible. So from the very first day that I started trading, at least, I don't know if it's the same for you, I was told that markets are opened by amateurs and closed by professionals. The advice was to trade the open when the amateurs are there, or get out in the clothes when the professionals are doing their stuff, tape painting and end of window dressing thingies or whatever. Um, you know, and back in the day, this was true when there were uh, trading pits, when there were specialists, uh, you know, when people were flashing hand signals to each other to get trades. That was true because the open is when all the volume came in. And then if anybody traded in the middle, everybody could see it. So everybody hid all their orders from other people where it was the volume of everybody else. But then the quants showed up, us, me, you know, the, the, the folks who look at data and look at opportunities in the data and find this quantitative edge. And we found all these inefficiencies in the market where there actually was a real edge to doing certain things. And it turned out that there was edge during the middle of the day. There was edge at 2 a.m. There is an edge in the overnight trade, the overnight anomaly trade. There's arbitrage opportunities left and right. Slowly but surely, intraday trading became more and more viable, meaning after the open, you could trade throughout the day. There were opportunities all throughout the day to trade. And the volume that used to be concentrated on the open or the close was now distributed a lot more evenly throughout the day. So it's, in fact, even more obvious when you look at, well, I don't know how many of you were trading back in the day, but it was absolutely the first hour, hour and a half was dead, and then nothing kind of happened. All that's changed. So with that being said, with all that being our foundation for the discussion here, I'm going to start sharing my screen, and I'm going to show you the falling knife scenario and how to structure your charts so that you don't fall into those uh, things. Let me get these things out of the way, get my chart set up here for everybody, and share my screen. Here we are. So this is a daily chart of the S&P 500. If you're a day trader, don't start sneezing. Okay, this is relevant for whether you're a day trader or a swing trader. The principles work on intraday. They work on daily charts, weekly charts, monthly, yearly, whatever time frame you want to look at. The principles that we're going to be talking about here apply. I'm not going to give you this little super hyper fragile niche that's going to work for the next three minutes and then break and be destroyed for the rest of your journey. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm talking about 
a real legit foundation to work with. So the first thing I always want to do, and we, we've been talking about this, is the market regime. What is the environment that we are currently in? If we're in a bullish environment and it's a quiet trending environment, then that's actually one of the best places to buy the dip. If you're in a bullish volatile environment where the days are really, you know, just, just looking at the bars here, you know, this was a big day, 1.73. That that's that's very uncommon. You see a number of other days that's just, you know, quarter percent, half a percent. This is the environment where you want to be looking at where buying the dips, catching a falling knife actually works. And you can see there's these tails at the bottom. This is these this is a one day chart, remember. This is uh February, or, I'm sorry, uh September 20th, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, the 27th, the 30th, the first, the second today. Okay. So first thing you can see is this was big, big day. 1%. This was a, a good day to catch the dip. This is another good day to catch the dip. So these big, really big days on swing trading, these are excellent dip buying opportunities here. You can see it. When we break it down into day trading, these are going to be a lot harder to trade. These smaller ones are going to be a lot easier to trade on the day trading side. But the first thing we want to do is we want to discover who's in charge of the market that you're trading right now. Okay. We have small traders and we've got large traders. Large traders, we're talking billion dollars hedge funds. Um, we're talking, you know, the 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 big guys, the people that can really put a lot, a lot of money to work, and they do it based on really slow information. If I've got to put, you know, 150, 200 million dollars to work to buy to to you know make an adjustment so that I can get going on my inflation is declining and growth is increasing thesis, then it's going to take. I'm not going to just hit market buy. You know, I've, I've got 5,000, 10, 20, 50,000 contracts to go put to work. It doesn't just happen. And you can't just hide that sort of stuff either. You know, a big block of a thousand trades that shows up. People see that. So you got to break it up and you got to like, there's all sorts of forensic that happen and it takes time. So when uh, they, cut interest rates, where we get a CPI print, where an election is handled, where, you know, some sort of really big change in the macroeconomic way, big money is going to come in. Okay. When they do something, you, you and your one lot micro S and P futures, NASDAQ micro contract are no match for, for that. And they have problems too. If you've got to put 25,000 contracts to work, you cannot just step in and, and say, hey, I, you know, I, I need to get it um, at uh, you know, $5,495. That's, you know, that's the price I want right here. By the time you get that order done, it's probably going to be you know, another 100, 100 S&P points higher or something um, before you're going to get it. So where the small guy has an advantage, there's a big disadvantage. Where the big guy has an advantage, they have a big disadvantage as well. They Big disadvantage, they can't get in and out the way the small guy can. And so you need to you identify where you are. Are you that small trader who's in and out, in and out, nimble, and can benefit from a 25, 30, 50 basis point move? In, in the in the futures that day. That's not going to move the needle if you're running a couple billion. If you're, you know, if you're on a fifty hundred thousand dollar whatever account, you can do great with that sort of those small moves. Okay. And so the big money needs to catch this big stuff. So what we're going to do is is let's identify where we are. Okay. We are, I'm going to focus on not the big money so much. I'm going to focus on being able to get in and out throughout the day. Okay. Swing trading, it works as well. 
But the idea here is we need to identify is somebody big. This was a big move right here. Is somebody big in charge? Great. Go with it. If they're not in charge and it's small guy trading going on, great. Go with it. That's the most important part of this whole thing. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I just want to identify the market environment. Now we can look at it just by a chart. You know, we, this is a trending bullish market and we can determine when it's high volatile and low volatile. High volatile means you kind of, you really have to cut your position size down um, and you need to be prepared. You know, you, you could have a 50 or hundred point turning point from where you entered where you know it may that may blow up your account if you don't stop out right and the same thing you know you also are going to have much bigger moves so using a much smaller account or, or uh, position you're going to catch a bigger move so you can Use smaller amounts. That's just volatility taming, volatility targeting, like getting your position sizing adjusted to volatility. You can use things like ATR. Uh, you can, you know, look at uh, volatility, like different volatility measurements to do it. So I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and throw the old trusty couple of moving averages here. So we've got the 200 period moving average. Okay, if you are a sh a, a like a long-term swing trader, then one of the best things you can do is say, okay, are we above the 200 or not? If you are, great, we're in a trend. So now I can kind of like dial it down. What type of trend are we in? How are we going to get a little more tactical? Okay, you can do 100, you can do a 50, you can do a 1,000. You come up with one that, that you like, do the work, see if it's useful, and, you know, see, the whole point is not to just buy and sell at that line because that, that, that's sometimes okay to do and not, but you get like churned in these areas. Um, the way I use the 200 period, the 200 day simple moving average is I just say, if we're above it, great. My swing systems are, uh, are going to be used, okay? If we're above it, that means we're in a bullish trend. It doesn't tell me if it's a high volatility or a low volatility trend. It just means we're in a rising bullish trend. Okay, it's 200 rising. Okay, if 200 is not rising, if it's going down, then we're in a bearish trend. And we're below it, we're in a bearish trend. Bearish markets are a lot more volatile than bullish markets when it comes to equities. The, the next thing you want to do is you want to determine is it a high volatility or a low volatility market? Okay, you can see just by the size of the bars, see how small these were all through here? That the, the initial thrust is big and then it gets quiet. That's a nice, easy trend. And then it gets big again and the downside gets big. Big thrust up, quiet, 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 quiet. You may think that that's not too quiet on the intraday levels, but generally speaking, it's just kind of a bunch of small days where a couple of big days random, you know, happen, but mostly it's a bunch of small days. So you could say, okay, every t if we're above the 8 and the 21 EMA on the daily, we're, you know, we're, we're in a, a, a nice bullish trend. A couple of ways to do that. Okay, let me turn that off. And you know, the way I like to do it is, is this basic one here, which is my SQN indicator. It's free on TradingView. Just go search for it. I, I posted it. It's free. Um, I use this to kind of drive all my decisions. So it's when it's in the green here, that's a bull quiet. When it's blue, that's volatile. Okay. And you can see, I don't worry about major market tops, like, you know, like these crash type tops when we're in green. But when we get to a blue anywhere, then I start to light that. Now my volatility is high. So I lighten my position and I deal it. Okay. So, we are in an environment now. When this is green, we are in an environment where buying the dip to the long side is viable. Not in here, not when it's blue, not when it's blue, not when it's yellowish or whatever it is. Um, certainly not when it's red, okay? When it's green, this olive green, that's the environment 
on a daily chart, when the daily chart is like that, that's when you say, yep, this is a place where I would consider buying the dip. Okay. So then let's break it down and let's do, we'll, do, we'll just do today, for example. Okay. This is a 10 minute chart of the S&P futures. Um, yes. Okay. So that this is today. Um, same chart. We already know from this chart that we are in a bull quiet environment. So dips can be bought. That's the first thing. We already know, we're already showing up to work thinking to ourselves like, okay, I'm probably going to be interested in buying a dip. Doesn't mean that it's a guaranteed winner. The next problem we have is identifying if we are, who's in charge. Okay, so, so let's just do a flow chart. Okay, one, market regime. So bull, quiet, vol equals dip buys are okay. Now we have another requirement, okay? We don't just buy it because we are in the mar uh, bull, quiet market regime here. We buy when we get evidence that it's worth doing. Okay, so the next thing we need to determine is who's in charge. Okay, that's our, this is our flow chart. So... This is the market open, and immediately we had a small gap down, and immediately it dropped. Okay, so the first thing you need to think about is, okay, what would give me an indication that it's not a big uh, macro move? Okay, what you're, what you're, if if you're looking to buy this dip as a trader. And, we're, and I'm talking about on a day trading side here, okay? Um, and if you're looking to buy this dip as a trader, a day trader, intraday, you need to look at it and think to yourself, okay, what would give me an indication that this is somebody, somebody bigger, something bigger is happening? Last night, there was a vice presidential debate and China ripped in the market, you know, not... Um, not for the same reasons, I believe, but that, you know they were up big. They've been up big for a whole week. They they pumped a bunch of stimulus into China, um, and so China was up huge last night. And there was this presidential uh, vice presidential debate, and there's this war situation. All these things that potentially could have been happening, but um, when you get up this morning, none of it had really done anything. So let's do. Let me kind of do the overnight session. Okay, so this would have been Tuesday. Uh, this would have been uh, so. So from here to here, I'll just put a like a line into this area. This area was the close of yesterday, the overnight session to the open today. So if you came into today and you saw this, and what happened last night during the overnight session. China rallied a bunch, and there was a vice presidential, vice presidential debate. And the price of this thing did not move, okay? That's information right there, okay? That's information that whatever happens, so I'm going to add this to our calculus here. So the overnight session did not move. Okay, so that tells me that whatever happened in the overnight session is not big fundamental macroeconomic data that big players are going to use to make a decision to move, you know, 100, 200, 500, a billion dollars into the market and bet on something. There's nobody's making a big bet based on what happened overnight. So let's add that. No big money bets overnight is what that means. Overnight session did not move. Let me go ahead and put an equal sign there. That equals no big money bets were made overnight. So you can know coming into the day today that unless something happens here on the open, that it doesn't, uh, that's news that has not hit the market yet. Okay. That's what that means. So right away, you can think to yourself like, okay, there's nothing new. Nothing's changed to the market. We have a small gap down and it's starting to go. So this is the first 10 minutes. Let's just throw a five up here. So this is the first five minutes, small gap down, um, but you know the same lows as yesterday. So what's 
critical to look at at this point to me. Well, those lows are, you know, somewhere in here is going to be critical to me. If we go down to that level, then that's going to actually give me information. That it didn't stop there is not that information that you think it is. A lot of people put these lines there and they're like, oh, if we break that, it's gone. That's not true. As an algorithmic developer, I find these lines and I put orders to scalp right in here. I'll put little high frequency trading orders right below certain swing lows because I know there's a bunch of stops right here. It's going to artificially pop. So I'm going to go short and then I'm going to, once that dies, easy, when, you know, like it, couple of ticks into it or a couple of seconds into it, I'm going to cover the position with my algorithm, not with me personally, but the algo is going to go short and cover right in here. I'm literally building stop runs as a core feature in my high frequency, medium frequency trading algorithms. Okay. So when you go put this magic line there and you say, oh, if that breaks, we're off and running. This is dipping. This is the market dying. Nope. That's just that's just a reaction at that level. Now you have to pay attention to what happened there and then what happens after. Okay, that's the first thing. So we, we break it and then it turns. Okay, there's another piece of information that we probably can put up here, I think would be kind of compelling to look at. Okay. Um, we have another, so that's another level right here that broke. So that's nice. And it looks like it came down to this level over here. Um, I think if we were to do, let me see, put it right here. Um, okay. That's it. So this day, this day was a significant day because it was the biggest move in our recent window. It marks the low of our recent window. So traders are going to use Fibonacci's. Whether you put it from there or from there, your recent swing low, this is going to be a level. Now, I'm not telling you to use Fibonacci's for your own decision. I'm saying use a Fibonacci because other people are going to be using Fibonacci's in that area. And if other people are using Fibonacci's, guess who they are? Fibonacci's are short term day trading type folks, people that make decisions that they don't need. I'm not going to make a $200 million, a billion dollar financial decision for my portfolio and fund based on a Fibonacci line. I'm going to do it off of th stuff that uh, is not subjective. The, the Fibonacci is subjective to where you put it. The CPI, the Fed cutting rates, the, you know, these bigger things are things that I could put money to work, big money to work, and participate. Okay, when I'm algo trading, when I'm doing my you know high-frequency trading stuff, I'm not putting $100 million on that. That's a small amount that you're trading here. A couple of contracts is all you can really get off. So it's not like a, it's not a huge thing that you can do. Okay, so back to it. We look left. We see that these stop levels got ran and... Other than that, I don't, maybe if we did like a overnight, um, maybe we, there's a better fib. Okay. So you put your fib down here, you put it up here. And then what actually did that do? The reason I did that is because I, I did the 24 hour session. I did that because other traders will have used the swing low to that swing high. That's what they do. Okay. It just so happens to be that that stop run that held right here and held here and held here and held here and broke right here was a 61.8 FIB level, which means other traders had it on their chart. And so if all of this is happening, now I've, I've, I've discovered that nobody, nobody's come to work today because of something that happened overnight. Nobody is like screaming into the office to buy as much as they can. Because if that was the case, it would have happened. It would have shown up in Asia and Europe session on the overnight thing. And it didn't. It did not show up in our in our regular session. Okay. So it's oh there. And even without the overnight fib uh level, it's it's fine. Um, so you can see 618 is there. Sweeping the lows 
is there. Let's take this fib out of there because it's annoying. But now I know three price ran stops and reversed back back up at key level fib plus line okay so now i know after so it's it's 5 10 15 minutes in this stop got ran and i'm like okay did some news just hit the market did some news hit the tape that is actually super important no it did not okay so we run the stops now it's my job to say as a trader what market regime are we in we are in the bull quiet market regime dips are okay to be bought the only time that and it's rare that this is not true the only time when you're in a bull quiet market regime where stops to the downside get ran and they continue going is on a big news event day. That's it. It's rare that you don't go run some stops, go hit a key level and then on the open early and then just drift higher into the end. So how would I have done this now in hindsight? How do, how do I trade this? Okay. So I that happened, an immediate reaction. Okay. So when the immediate reaction happens, if you're aggressive, then you can start looking to get in, okay? Or you can see what happens. What I like to do is wait a little bit. I want to wait and see. Okay, it goes up. Comes, if, if it starts to go down and fails, I want to be in. I want to start looking to buy. So I'm going to be buying above a new high because that means these, so you see this all the way down, up, down we go up and we hold this one runs it so everybody over here is thinking oh this is going down it's just we're in a bull quiet market regime so we look to buy dips we don't look to sell them okay so you buy the you know it opens here goes lower and then just powers higher so all these stops get ran this stop gets ran uh everybody who was hoping for the worst of the world who doesn't understand market regimes has to stop out of their short position and buy to cover. So now you're long from 57, 47, 48 or whatever. And eventually this thing moves 30, 25, 30 points higher. Okay. Now you can do the easy thing, which is just get up to where yesterday's close was and sell, you know, maybe lighten position, maybe trail stop up, whatever, because what's, most likely going to happen, this is something to understand too. Okay, price range stops. So you wait for weakness to fail and shorts to be stopped out to enter. That's one in the same. I'm going to get in on the same shorts get stopped out and entering. And then the fifth thing is uh, the day un until, unless news hits the tape that changes anything, it's full quiet. It's bull quiet day trader day. And what is a bull quiet day trader day? That means mean reversion, okay? That's all this means. That means it's gonna move up and then it's gonna come back down. So another thing that we already know that now it's going to be the small people, small small potato traders. You know, we're not talking about big the big funds. I'm trying to get this to move, come on. This little thing here, there we go. Um, so this goes up here, hits that level and then you know, hits the same level here and dies out. So you know it's a mean reversion day. You know it's going to be a mean reversion day. So you want to take profits into the trade. You don't want to try to catch this thing up to like 10,000 S&P today. And then if you're going to hang around for the day and maybe, you know, if you didn't short this and you're saying, I'm, I'm looking for another opportunity to get long, we use the same tool. We use our Fibonacci.
and we say, okay, if something's starting to build, because these were big, these were big candles. If something's starting to happen, then a fib level won't hold. But if a fib level holds, then that's that's us being told that traders are trading this. It's not um it's not big money. So today is such a fantastic example of where day traders, low time frame traders are in charge of the market. We're we're just trading. Okay. There's nothing big moving the market. Nobody, you know, me and my 10 lot NASDAQ futures are not going to change anything about this market. Maybe a hundred lot might do something for a minute or two, but it's like, there's not enough money to really put it into uh, a big move. So you could, you know, you catch this for, let's say you sell into um, a peak. So this thing spikes and then you're like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little trail. So anytime you get a big spike like that, you can almost always guess that it's probably the end and it's probably going to reverse. So for me, that would have been something like 57.48 to, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe let's call it 57.64. So 15 points. 48. Yeah, like 15 points on the ES. Not expecting to get this. Um, could have been. Um, also, I probably wouldn't have bought this one down here. Aggressive traders could. You know, you, you put a one minute on and it, it, you know, it's a lot clearer. You can see that, yeah, you know, it's... Um, you have opportunities. It come, comes down to those levels, right? It comes down to these levels and you get that shakeout sort of thing. You know, you get long anywhere in here and you can ride it up into that. But I don't do that. I, I trade a little bit more calm. Um, and then the second trade, if you come back later in the day and you see things down at a 50% fib, you just say, okay, well, let's put a buy stop somewhere up in here or maybe just a, an order, a market order into here to see what we can get. And ultimately, it, you know, let, let's call it 54 to 64, another 10 points. So there's probably 25 S&P points per contract, which is, um, what is that? Uh, 625, 1250, uh, 25, 50, uh, 25 per uh, 25, 25, it's like 500 bucks, right? <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank? Yeah. 625 per contract was available today on that. Um, and it, it's easy, it's easy pickings. Now, let me give you an example of a big day, a day where, um, let's go here. Here's a steamroller day. That would have been the 19th of September. So let me just do my usual. Go in 19 September. Okay, so we know what September, 19 of September is. I'm going to draw, I'm going to put a horizontal line here. Okay, I know, we, we already know it was a busy day. Okay, but I'm, I'm just going to give you examples here. So let's go to the overnight session again. See if we can't get to... I know the replay is a lot easier to do, but I'm I'm just kind of moving around quick, okay? Um, replay and go tos and all that they're they're great, but I you know I'm just gonna okay. So there it is. Okay, so first things first. What did we do last time? First thing we did is we looked at our we looked at our big picture chart. Okay, so going into the day. It had been quiet day, quiet day, quiet day, some big bullish days, but we're in bull quiet going into this day. So in my mind, I need to put my checklist up here. Uh, let's do it real quick. So bull quiet regime. So who's in charge, right? So let's look one overnight session. What happened in the overnight session? Well, this, where's the close? Here's the close, here's the open. So in the overnight session, something in the news happened. So 56.98, uh, almost 100 points, 80 point move overnight. Okay, this is a, let's get a percentage. 
one and a half percent move overnight, one and a half percent move. So in the overnight session, 1.5% move. Let's change this to a plus sign. Okay. Okay. That was a 1.5% overnight session move. That's a clue. That's a clue that who's in charge. Big money is in charge. Because Europe and Asia pumped this thing all night long. Okay. They're not they're not confident enough. And and plenty of plenty of US algo and, and whatever. They're not confident enough to say, oh, let's send it and and put big money to work because it wasn't that big of a a, a move. It wasn't like an election was, you know, won or lost. It wasn't like a rate cut happened overnight or something like that. But some sort of data came out that bigger money around the world, around the world money is more conservative than US money, by the way. During the US session, it's a lot less conservative. Um, overnight money is a lot more conservative than the uh, than the US uh, session. And just over overall, international trade is far more conservative. So if a move like this happens in the Europe session, that tells you that it's big money time. Okay, so you wake up, you are you come in your office and you know this. And so what are you doing? You know that the opportunity, next thing I need to figure out is, okay, is this actually going to be a big money day or are they going to hand it back to the low money folks? So right away, let's start looking at the day. So it's just kind of 57.78, so a 30 point drop, which is about how much we did on the today's trade, right? You know, the the small money day, the the, the dip buying day, right? That, that kind of gave it to us. This dip buying, yeah, there might be an opportunity, but it's just your position size has to be super small. But this was the giveaway that something big had happened. So maybe typically they tend to just keep going. So let's see, and it does. And let's see if we get maybe like a fib level, if that kind of, yeah, that's a fib level. All right, so traders are back. Traders are back. It's just such a big range that small traders are not as involved. Okay. And my guess, well, what I know about today is that it's it's a big day. So I'm guessing we're probably going to continue higher. And at this point, it's mostly just orders transferring. That was it. But ultimately, this went from 57... So 5690 to almost so 110 110 points uh over one and a half percent move. And ultimately what happened is it just it just comes up into here. Anything that goes above is there's going to be profit taking. Um the move happened overnight. You just know coming into the day that it's not going to be an easy day. Okay. So overnight sessions one and a half big money is in charge. For me. Looking at this, it's the rules that I would follow that I follow on this is small size, if any trading. And your, you know, your volatility position sizing algorithm should handle all of that stuff for you. Okay. So what have we covered? We covered how to organize the market regime, right? Like what is the big picture we're in? What trades are opening up? because of it. In a bull quiet market regime, short selling is few and far between. It's violent and it can change on you. Like just when you think it's about to happen, it's about to break down, it turns around and just blasts higher. Okay. So what we have to do is say we're in the bull quiet regime. Look for dips to be bought if today is a small, uh, small trader market by dips. We can short rips. We can, uh, you know, anytime we get to key levels, we reevaluate and we say, okay, what's happening here? If 
we're reacting off fib levels or a VWAP or, um, you know, if I, if I was to put a VWAP on this one, for example, on the open, you know, that wouldn't give us any insight. I don't think really much, right? Kind of hangs around near it, but that, that didn't give us a whole lot of insight, right? Um, so you can use VWAP, you, anything that's technical that a, a retail trader would be, or, you know, or, or even professional traders would be using, like the professionals use those tools. Don't think that just because they're, oh, that's all retail stuff or whatever. Professionals use them. It's just they use them to gauge the reaction at those levels. They don't use it to just be like, we touched it, let's go. It's 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 part of the, the calculus. Okay, so we learned how important it is to understand how if the overnight session has anything to do with today. If the overnight session has something to do with today, great. You should know it because it'll be a pretty big move or the news would have happened, right? Just because somebody's talking about the news on TV, CNBC, or, you know, the internet, Twitter, or wherever, you know, just because they're talking about it doesn't mean it's actually that important. Vice presidential debate last night. Everybody was talking about it, but it didn't matter at all to the market. And, uh, and so what does the overnight session tell us? What news is there? Now, also, there was no news today that was of any relevance scheduled. So if I know that at 6.30 a.m. that they're going to release some, or 5.30 a.m., or whatever it is, if they're going to release some special data on the market at that period of time, and the market you know, is doing nothing up until then, and then all of a sudden they release it, I know that I'm... If, if there was a news release that's about to happen right here and this is happening, this is telling me that that news is going to be worth not being involved in until it's done. <laughs> Whole bunch of stuff. If you got any questions, ask them in the comments below. Um, you can always find me on Twitter, but uh, you know, ask in the comments below if you have any questions of like, what about this day? What about that day? Maybe we can just go through a bunch of examples. These, it wasn't cherry picked. It was just recent. Okay, we, we can go to whatever date and time around the world and I could, I'm happy to just like overlay this framework and see it. The market regime is going to be the first thing. If you're saying like, oh, well, what about, you know, on 9-11 back in 2001, you know, how would you have known not to buy that dip? It's like, well, the market regime was not in a bull quiet market regime. Simple. Um you know, what about the, um, there was a, a big flash crash in 2018. Well, you had bull vol. So we knew that that was market top environment. So we knew buying dips was not the thing to do. When we're always concerned about like this one-off event where we think the world's going to end, let's go back and look at all the times that the world, that those big events happen. What was the market regime that we were in? Usually what happens is you were not in the bull quiet market regime because it's not fragile. It's not a fragile market. A bull volatile market regime is a fragile environment because it's moved so high that people are like scared of their profits being lost. So they sell it quickly. Um, when it's in a downward bear market regime, you don't buy dips because it's trending, right? So it's, it's all these things. You start with a bigger picture and you break it down and you break it down. All right. Um, by the way, this trading strategy that we're talking about right here, this intraday trading strategy, this is the curvy trading strategy. I built this trading strategy. You can get access to it at pollinatetrading.com slash curvy. Um, excellent for day trading, especially when we're talking about days like today, which 70% of all trading days are mean reversion days. So it's an excellent strategy to be trading. I personally prefer swing trading. Swing beast is my primary swing trading strategy where I'm buying stocks and holding them for uh, about a month. So trading options on them. We have our overnight anomaly strategy and join us in the trading lab. Anything you want to do again, uh, hit, hit me up in the comments, like, and subscribe. Uh, send this to your, your, your worst enemy or your best friend to uh, get figured out. And I'll be back tomorrow. Love you.